Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. This is AppleNaps.com, in-depth how-to of everything new in iOS 7, uh, walk-through, how-to, tutorial, whatever you want to call it. We're going to dive into all the new features of iOS 7. This is coming out on September 18th when hopefully you'll be seeing this video. And rather than just a glimpse, we're going to go really in-depth. So we'll start off with the biggest new feature, which is Control Center. So you simply swipe up from the bottom of the screen and you have access to quick settings like airplane mode, Wi-Fi, you can turn on and off Bluetooth with just a single tap. You have the brightness slider, you have your uh, media playback controls, like so. And then you also have access to the new airdrop feature as well as airplay. And then you can turn on flashlight, clock, calculator, or go into camera with the latter three opening up the respective app. So that's control center. And again, it's just a single swipe up. And also, you can see the translucence effects, which ties into the whole theme and design elements of iOS 7. That's probably the most noticeable aspect if you see just all these different array of app con icons. But again, this is more about the features. So if you dive into settings, you can go and there's a special access for Control Center. You can see access within apps. So another major new aspect is multitasking. So if you double tap the home button, it's the same way to activate multitasking, but rather than that, little tiny bottom with just the app icons. Now you're given card, which are live previews of the various apps, and you can just scroll endlessly through them all, and then tap on one of them to bring it up, like so. And you can dive back out. And then also you can flick away to force close the apps. And this also works with multi-touch. So let's say right here I grab three fingers, flip them all at the same time, I just quit three apps all at once. So that's what you can do with multitasking. Really powerful and it has some back-end features that lets the apps run automatically based on your usage habits. So that's really neat. On the flip side of Control Center, there's Notification Center. So it's activated the same way. It's a swipe down from the bottom or from the top. This was available in iOS 5, iOS 6, so that's not new. What is new is this new Today View, which shows you date, weather, your upcoming calendar, your time for tomorrow, and this can also show your commute times based on a schedule like you go to work every day, got to be there at 9 or whatever. It will show you how long from right now based on current traffic. And then also there's a new section which is missed, and this shows you the notifications you might have missed during the day. And then of course there's the regular notifications that you're familiar with. And also, it's interesting right here, App Store, eBay, and two other apps were updated. So let's mention this really quick. Like, apps update automatically in iOS 7. So you don't actually do it. They just kind of do it in the background, and then you get the notification. Again, this is in settings. You can turn that function on or off as well. So that's Notification Center. And then the camera and photos got some big changes. First of all, there's the whole new design. You can see the cool little demo. But now you can simply swipe and that transfers mode. So here we're in video and then you can swipe, go to photo and then square photo and then into panorama mode like so really quick light and then when you're in the still photo mode you have access to live filters so you top in the bottom right and you see we have eight different filters and they're live filter effects so let's pick this chrome effect you can see the changes right here and then say we take this photo now once this photo is captured, we used we took it with a filter. Now you go to edit it, and you can take that filter off, or you can change the filter. But you can even see the photo if there was no filter at all, and like I said, you can change it. So that's a really powerful effect as well. And then in terms of uh, photos as a whole, there's a new setup where it splits up your photos based on time, date, and location. So you have this full-on year view and you can scroll to see all the different photos zoom in on the individual ones like so and then when you do zoom in you can go back out in the moments and you can see Angeles National Forest it grouped these photos together all these different events that we've had a lot of ours are screenshots since we're reviewing apps but it's a whole new way to view your photos rather than just the regular camera roll view like this where it's just an endless supply of photos. Now it has organization to it and this is all done automatically in the background just based on the location data and the time data that the photos are inherently storing already. And then another new feature, we briefly mentioned it, it's back into Control Center, it's AirDrop. And with AirDrop 
you see you have these three choices. You can leave it off or then let only your contact see you or let everyone see you. So now AirDrop's on and in this case it lets you share photos, videos, or various uh, specific documents to another iOS device and friends will be who are close to you will show up in this AirDrop screen and then from there you can start sharing. So let's say we want to share these three photos. Now when we go to do so, AirDrop right here in the top, your friends who are nearby will appear and you simply tap on them to send the files to them. There's really nothing at all. It's just like the Mac version but it's made for iOS. It's really seamless integration. Then since we're here you can see this new share sheet that Apple offers. But that's uh, not a major new feature. It just goes back into the design elements. One big feature though is Safari. Safari has a whole new view, so we're just on the Yahoo homepage. And watch the top and the bottom of the screen. As I scroll down to read through the stories, they disappeared. And then when you scroll back up, they're going to pop back up. So that's a big new thing. And then when you have tab view, as you can see, you can scroll through all these different tabs. And then a swipe left removes that tab, it closes it. And you can keep uh, going through the different tabs. And you can do, they stack just like a shelf would, like kind of like a file cabinet. But the big thing is just how the page disappears as you go. There's also a new unified search field, which intelligently suggests it as you're typing, as you can see. You get to that whole list. Bring up appleandapps.com. See the cool little stories of the day. And that's uh, the new Safari. Really clean interface and the new tab view. And then also there's this new uh, shared links view which shows you articles that have been shared on your Twitter timeline rather than using the links right within the Twitter app so that's a pretty nice integration and then the music app has a new feature so these are our normal playlists but in the bottom left you can see iTunes radio it's free it's ad supported but if you do have iTunes match that means that the ads are removed so you get about six skips per hour or so which is usual and th this feature it's along the lines of Pandora or Songza as compared to more of a uh, audio or Spotify which has that a la carte music streaming subscription for $9.99 a month this is free and it's just personalized radio and so you can skip the songs or whatever and then you have this star in the left and this lets you like or dislike songs and you can also add to your iTunes playlist. So this feature right here is probably going to be the most used to really personalize your station. And one interesting note is that say you flip up Control Center, you have that access to these likes and dislikes from Control Center. So that means you can access it anywhere. Even if for say you're on the lock screen, you can flip up and you see right here you have the same controls from the lock screen which no third party apps offer. And again the same goes for Control Center. So that's uh, pretty much iTunes radio. One other little thing, you have history and it shows all the stations you've listened to and all the songs that you've listened to and then you can save songs into an iTunes wish list to kind of remind you and you can set up an endless supply of songs. So say you want to create a new song, it's just that plus button right there and you can search for a particular artist like ACDC radio or you could go more with uh, creating from a genre or even a song from scratch. Like say, for instance, you're listening to your iTunes playlist. You can create a song from anything. Like say I'm listening to this song. Create button right here. And you can create a new station from this artist or from this song. So that's how iTunes Radio is just integrated completely into the music app. There's also new Siri features. So say, what time is it? She has a new voice which is less computer based and there's also a male voice to go with it. And now you can also perform Twitter, Bing, and Wikipedia searches with Siri. So say for instance, tell me about the Fifth Amendment. Okay, I found this. So you, now you have Wikipedia right here. So that's just uh, some of the new features for Siri. And then one really neat new addition is say I go into messages. Apple's included these new gestures, so if I want to delete this, I simply swipe on it 
and I can delete that message. Or say I go into Safari and I'm looking at this page, you can just swipe to go back to the previous page and the same thing going forward. The key to this is start with your finger off the edge of the screen and then swipe it onto the display. That's how you really get it working if you're moving in between pages. And that's going to come into play across numerous stock apps. So right here, you can swip, swipe just like that to go through kind of menu system and music. And it really is layered through many of the different stock apps. So you see the notification centers, and then you can swipe back just like that. Since we're in settings, let's show you these new wallpapers Apple's offering. So look at all these new still frame choices. So there's quite a few to choose from, really deluxe. These bottom ones go with those new iPhone 5C, but just really a lot of neat, high quality choices. And then Apple also has these dynamic ones, which you can see right here what it does. It kind of gives you that subtle motion to the background. So those are a few little extra additions. Another new system setup is text size. So you can change the system-wide font and then as up, apps are updated for iOS 7 whatever size you pick every app that supports it including the stock apps or third-party apps will have the same text size so that's a really neat one and we mentioned this earlier about multitasking but background app refresh it lets you dictate which apps can use background data to kind of be ready at launch with that multitasking system so you can have on and off buttons for each of those just a couple extra little things and that's kind of a tutorial how to walk through of the new features to expect in iOS 7 because the all new design is obvious but there's quite a few features going on and just new interface ideals at work so we hope you enjoyed it this is Apple and Apps and we'll talk to you next time